The Jailer, also known as the Banished One, is the main antagonist of the Shadowheads. With him in chains, we know that he was jailed and must have been jailed for thousands of years. However, most recently, as all of you know it, the Machine of Death broke and the Jailer is now breaking free. None of that would be possible if he didn't have allies that slowly but surely empowered him. So let's take a look at what are some of his allies, from minions to equals, who joined his cause and helped the Banished One break free. Brought to you by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, an app and a browser extension that allows you to choose your location and access content you might not be able to access geographically. Bypass censorship everywhere and get an extra layer of security, allowing you to keep your passwords and media safe online. Among many other things, you can block ads, trackers and viruses while you're browsing and I've used Surfshark myself while gaming as it protects my online identity and shields me from any potential swatting, doxing or being DDoSed. You can even access 15 different Netflix libraries as well as loads more libraries across content platforms. Best of all, Surfshark is the only VPN where you can use the same account across an unlimited number of devices. Use my code DORON to get crazy 80% discount and 4 extra months for free. Surfshark offers 30 day money back guarantee meaning that if you don't absolutely love it you can just try it out with no risk. Check I'm link in the description below and get Surfshark. Number 10. The Scourge. As was told to us by Terranus, there must always be a Lich King in order to control the mindless undead. This prophecy rang true as that is exactly what happened. Sylvanas destroyed the Helm of Domination and the Master of the Scourge just went berserk across all Azeroth. To make matters worse, the Jailer himself directly took control of the Undead Horde as well as over the Cult of the Damned together with his Maw Sword. They organized an attack across Azeroth but mostly concentrated around Northrend and the Icecrown Citadel by also raising some of the Fallen Scourge champions. However, I'd say this is really the weakest of the Jailer's allies and really the least important. We essentially fought against what was left of the Scourge, a husk of the once grand Undead army. Now they were just used as fodder to weaken our new invasion and to soften us up for the Shadowlands. Number 9. Mortal Souls It is hard to call these allies, but this is pretty much the bulk of the Jailer's army. As was said in the expansion artbook, souls damned to the moss suffer within end. They are twisted until a mere shade of their former glory remains. It is then that the tormented willingly serve their tormentor. His soldiers are the very worst the damned have to offer and are eternally loyal to the very hand that broke them. What this essentially means is that every one of these souls that are within them all are just prisoners as well that were tortured and so twisted that they became his loyal servants. It is likely that some actually might be the so-called irredeemable souls and the villains across the universe, but as the machine of death broke recently, it is likely that the majority of these souls are actually the fallen in the recent wars, for example those that fell when Teldrassil was burned. I believe that previously souls might have reached the mob, but very rarely. However, recently the Jailer had a huge influx which is why he amassed such an army within the mob. So yeah, not exactly allies but mainly servants. Number 8. Lich King at the moment, it is really hard to speculate whether he was an ally or just a basic minion and what was the working relationship between the Jailer and the Lich King. What we do know for certain is that the Jailer is definitely behind his creation, behind the armor and the helm. Most likely, all of this was done through the Nathalie's team who seemed to be working for Sar the Nathalie's of Revendreth, who is in turn in league with the Jailer and has been most likely for a really long time. The Lich King is definitely no longer an ally because well, he doesn't exist anymore, but I'd say despite that he was one of the most important allies of the Jailer. The Lich King was the tool, the key to creating chaos, to tying up the Burning Legion and to, in the grand scheme of things, fueling the Maw and the Jailer. It was really the Lich King that created Savannah, that then created all the conflict that we've had, then that did all that she did and broke the seal. My opinion is that the Lich King wasn't like an equal ally and was more like a minion instead. We definitely know that Bolvar actively opposed the Jailer and held the seal for a long time, as long as possible and it is not certain what Artis did with the Jailer exactly. I believe that he struggled with it and that he never really unleashed the power of the mob upon us with a tiny bit of Artis that was left. Number 7. The Kyrian. 
So, the Kiri and Avashan are literally wow angels. They are messengers, couriers, and some of the purest souls in the entire universe. Generally, when a mortal that served his entire life dies, he is sent to Bashan. Then, he spends eons in order to ascend and to gain his wings. It is constant meditation, wiping out memories and training. Generally, this goes great, but rarely an aspirant will fail to complete the Rite of Passage and he will darken into what is known as the Four Sword. Then the Four Sword wander the plains of action and unless they're put in check very early on, their doubt spreads like plague. Well, this became quite a problem and it turned into a really big problem, into something of a civil war in Bastion right now. Spoiler alert, Devos, one of the most loyal of the Kirians, became a Forsworn as she apparently had a chat with the Jailer and in turn decided to join his side to undo the injustice brought upon him by the Eternal Ones. We defeat her. But nonetheless, the Four Storm become quite a major force and are quite an important weapon of the Jailer. Even Uther is being turned to this side. So, yeah, Kyrians, supposedly the purest of the souls, are in numbers turning to the side of the Jailer and are now becoming his messengers and his couriers. Number 6. Muezala. Uetai no Muezala, or simply known as Muezala or even Death is one of the most powerful Loa that ever existed, if not the most powerful one. Currently, he is an extremely mysterious entity and we only see him on a few occasions and even those events were just shrouded in mystery. The God of Death is the boss of Monsambi and he has been around plotting for most likely thousands of years. It was Muzala that took the Eye of Odin and gave him the ability to look into the Shadowlands, but at the same time it also gave the Jailer the ability to look into the material plane of Azeroth. Muzala was the one that brought Helia to the Jailer side and it was him that whispered into the ear of Olgin and that turned Sylvanas into the war chief, which ultimately caused all the events thus far. With this information, it seems quite obvious that the Loa has been plotting together with the Jailer for many millennia. Currently, we know that we will fight him in Bonsandi's pocket division within the Shadowlands, but other than that, we don't know a lot more. Why is the Loa that working with the Jailer? What is his ultimate goal? And what is he getting out of all of this? We will find out soon enough. Number 5. Helia. Originally, Helia was a Titanforged sorceress that battled the old gods on Azeroth and was one of the most skilled Titanforged ever. She crafted the Elemental Plane as a prison of the Elemental Lords and later on served Odin. With her skills, she sealed off the halls of Elder from a section of Uldua and through the new realm, Odin would raise fallen Rykel into his service. To do this, he needed Valkyr that would die and would work essentially as like discount Kyrian. What we've learned recently is that Odin pretty much set up a mini Shadowlands dimension and who better to use for a pocket realm than Helia. Eventually, she rebelled as she was filled with resentment because he forced her to become a Valkyr and Helia locked him up and created her new realm, Helheim. This was the opposing realm and also sort of a mini Shadowlands. Recently, we've learned that she made some sort of a deal with Sylvanas Windrunner and now we obviously know what that was. Her connection to the Jailer has been confirmed with Muezala, but we don't know whether that happened ages ago or recently since Odin's eye allowed him to appear into the Shadowlands and is connected most likely to the Jailer. Helia is actually corrupting the Kyrian, but we don't know the full extent of her story progression within the Shadowlands as she had been a Valkyr for millennia. She would no doubt be experienced by this fact alone and it makes a lot of sense that the Jailer picked her as Helia is incredibly unique, a titan creation able to create pocket dimensions, sort of a weird mix of a Kyrian with a mortal plane and a character that essentially was like a mini eternal one on Azeroth. So now with the Jailer's enhancement, her role will no doubt be great. Number 4. Kel Tuzad. One of the most iconic characters of the entire work of Sirius. Long ago, a mage that turned towards necromancy and dark powers and joined the Lich King. Kill Tuzad was key in orchestrating the Plague of Lordaeron and much of the Scourge machinery in general. However, as his curiosity for necromancy led him to this path, it also led him to the source of necromancy itself, 
which is Mounted Axis. It is still uncertain how Keltuzad reached this realm exactly, but what we do know is that he took over one of the houses and created a ton of chaos. Spoiler alert, we do fight him in the end and supposedly defeat him, but we do not like end his existence. What is certain though is that Keltuzad is actually working for the jailer and is furthering his plans. What his long term goal is, no one can really tell at this point. He could have similar motivations as Sylvanas of trying to bring back free will, but knowing Keltuzad and his previous actions, it is most likely just power related. It was obvious in Multinaxis that he was just gathering power, but in the grand scheme of things, he might be trying to become a being of much greater significance and possibly even one of the rulers of death, which for a simple human mage of Dalaran is quite the advancement. Number 3. Sylvanas most obvious one on this list, and I'm guessing the first one that came to everyone's mind as they opened this video. Sylvanas, as the Lich King was defeated, wanted to end her miserable existence, but ultimately she found out that Amor awaits her in the afterlife, and instead the Jailer offered her a pact. A pact to restructure the afterlife to help him break free. To do this, she was given a long-term mission to get rid of Bolvar, the guy that was holding the Shadowlands from opening, and to also cause as much chaos as possible in order to fuel them all and to ultimately break the machine of death. Well, at the end of Battle for Azeroth, we've seen that happen, and Sylvanas has now reached the Jailer, saying that through him we will get our free will back whatever that means. Honestly, at this point, it is hard to speculate what type of role she'll play and whether she was just a pawn of the Jailer or a very high-valued ally. I believe that she'll play a pretty big role and will sort of be in the spotlight. Not in the same spotlight as before, but she just won't be a minion of the Jailer, but a character with a lot of say in the matter. At least that is what I think. What will actually happen though? We'll have to wait and see how Shadowlands progresses. Number 2. Margraves of Maldraxxus Maldraxxus was created by the first ones when they shaped the cosmos at the beginning of whatever era. It is the military of the Shadowlands and as far as we know, the Eternal One, Primus, ruled it for the longest time. However, at one point he learned about the Jailer and he disappeared, and the lesser Necrolords eventually took over the five different houses. Well, once we reach Mondraxxus, we learn that the place is an absolute mess, and absolute mess is just putting it lightly. The realm is essentially in a state of constant civil war between the warring houses just battling for supremacy. However, now We've learned that some have allied with the Jailer and are actually furthering his cause. Some houses have already been almost destroyed and a few really remain with the Jailer having quite the influence. I'd say the forces of Maldraxxus are probably his most important allies as Maldraxxus is there to defend the Shadowlands and to enforce peace. I'd say if the Jailer does manage to take control over this realm, he already completed half of the job. And lastly, number one, the Natrius. Sire of the Natrius, the master of Revendred, first blooded and the king of the Vantir. He is one of the most powerful beings in the universe and within the Shadowlands, he is the creator and the leader of Revendred. He also created the Vantir people from the souls of the redeemed. Now, originally, Revendred is supposed to be a purgatory where souls come to cleanse themselves of their sins and to hopefully become well-adjusted members of the afterlife. However, we've learned that Anatrius had allied himself with the Jailer and that he isn't exactly doing his job. Nothing is confirmed yet, but it does seem like he's causing a drought of anima and that he is in fact one of the main reasons why the Jailer has managed to break his chains. Whether he started this recently is uncertain, but with the speculations that the Dreadlords are the event here, it seems like he has been doing this for thousands of years. He may be behind the creation of the Lich King, the Burning Crusade, the corruption of Sargeras and most other major events that happened in the universe. Blizzard confirmed that there is a connection with the Natrazim and the Natrius, and it definitely makes a lot of sense. Natrazim, the Natrius, Natrazab, Castle Natria. Honestly, to me, Sire the Natrius seems like one of the most interesting characters of the Shadowlands, and he is for sure one of the most important, if not the most important, ally of the Jailer. Thank you for watching. Check out the top 10 hunters by clicking on the screen, and also check out Doran's Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.